What is the next significant event that happened in the Prophet's life? The next significant event that happens in the Prophet's life is the birth of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. The Imam is born. Now some of our scholars, they believe that Imam Ali was born before the Prophet married Khadija. It's disputed. We have some historical accounts that tell us, that indicate Imam Ali was born shortly before the Prophet married Khadija. He was born, then the Prophet married Khadija. Some other hadiths indicate he was born after the Prophet married Khadija. In any case, it does not really make a difference. Now, why is it that some scholars believe he was born before? Because one hadith says that when Imam Ali was just born, the Prophet was still in the house of Abu Talib. Because the hadith says when Imam Ali was born, the Prophet was still staying in the house of Abu Talib. His bed was still in the house of Abu Talib. And he had asked the mother of Imam Ali, I want Ali ibn Abi Talib to sleep next to me, next to my bed. So Imam Ali would not sleep by his mother Fatima bint Asad. He would sleep by who? The Prophet. So this hadith indicates that maybe Imam Ali was born before the Prophet married Khadija because when the Prophet married Khadija, I mean naturally he had another house, now he was living with Khadija. So that's why some believe Imam Ali was born before. In any case, it doesn't really make a difference. So now let's go with the common version that says the Prophet married first and then Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib was born later. So the Imam alayhi salam, he was born in the Kaaba on the 13th day of Rajab. It was a Friday, 30 years after the year of the elephant. So the Prophet was 30 years old when Imam Ali was born. Because the Prophet was born in which year? The year of the elephant, right? The Prophet was born the year of the elephant. So if Imam Ali was born 30 years after the year of the elephant, that makes the Prophet 30 years old when Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, was born. Now the event of Imam Ali's birth in the Kaaba is mutawatir. We have successive, authentic, correct hadiths from many, many historical sources that state Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, was born in the Kaaba. There are some people in history who cannot stand any virtue for Ahlul Bayt, who have tried to play around with that. They have, for instance, claimed that it was not Imam Ali who was born in the Kaaba. It was actually a man by the name of Hakim or Hukaim ibn Huzam. Hakim was the man who was born in the Kaaba. We'll see who he is. Not Imam Ali. Even though Al Hakim and Naysaburi, Al Hakim and Naysaburi is a very prominent Sunni scholar, he says there is no doubt that Ali was the only one born in the Kaaba. Even with such witnesses, with such testimonies, some ignorance throughout history have tried to say no, it was Hakim who was born in the Kaaba. Now some Sunni scholars, they try to reconcile between the two because they know for a fact Imam Ali was born in the Kaaba. That's not something you could deny. You'd be a fool to deny that. So what did they say? They're like, okay, two people were born in the Kaaba, Imam Ali and Hakim ibn Hizam. That's false. Because historical accounts tell us the only person who was born in the Kaaba was Imam Ali. And no other person had that privilege of being born in the Kaaba, except for Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib who, So who came up with these ahadith? The Zubairis, why? Hakim ibn Huzam, he was the cousin of Zubair. The Zubairis were a group of people who considered Zubair, who was one of the companions of the Prophet, they considered Zubair to be their leader, so two of them forged and fabricated these hadiths. For example, you have as Zubair ibn Bakkar wa Mus'ab ibn Abdullah, the grandson of Zubair. His grandson, he is the one who claimed that Hakim 
is the one who was buried in the Kaaba. Why? Because they wanted that honor to the family of Zubayr. So they fabricated these narrations. Yes, so we have Mus'ab ibn Abdullah ibn Zubayr. So he's the grandson of Zubayr. He along with another Zubayri man, they claimed that Hakim was born in the Kaaba. That's false, that's not true. As we said, Al-Hakim and Naysaburi, he says there's Tawatur, a Mutawatur hadith is a hadith that has been narrated so widely such that there is no doubt that it's authentic. It's a certain hadith that only and only Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, was born in the Kaaba. So how did this all happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted a divine sign to tell humanity, look, I choose my representatives. And he gave Imam Ali, before he was born, Allah sent a divine sign that Ali ibn Abi Talib is not an average man, he's chosen by me. I have chosen him to be miraculously buried in the Kaaba, uh, to be miraculously born in the Kaaba. So that everyone knows from day one, Ali ibn Abi Talib was chosen by God. That helps you accept his leadership. Because when you know that his birth was miraculous and it was chosen by God, then naturally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan for a person who was born that way. So this was a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, some people say that Imam Ali had the honor of being born in the Kaaba. Our scholars don't accept such phrasing. The Kaaba was honored to host Imam Ali salam, because Imam Ali is higher in status than the Kaaba. And if you find that strange and kind of like an exaggeration, right? We have authentic hadiths that say one believer, the mu'min, is more sacred in the eyes of God than in his own Kaaba. Yes, that's why the hadith says if you fight a Muslim, a mu'min, not only a Muslim but one who's a believer, if you fight a mu'min, it's worse than fighting the Kaaba and the house of God because the value of a mu'min in the eyes of God is higher than the Kaaba. Because at the end of the day, what is the Kaaba? It's just a building, it's a physical building. You know, if you have a house and you have people who live in the house, who's more important? The house itself or the people? The people. So it was the Kaaba that was honored to host Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib Yes, it was a miraculous sign, but just don't just don't forget that it's not that Imam Ali had the privilege and the honor to be born in the Kaaba. It was the Kaaba that had the privilege and honor by God to choose Imam Ali السلام, to be born inside the Kaaba. Now Fatima bint Asad, she was a distant cousin of the Prophet. She came from the tribe of Bani Hashim. She was a granddaughter of Hashim, the great grandfather of the Prophet. She was a very respectful woman. Abu Talib was the father of Imam Ali السلام. So his mother was Fatima bint Asad. His father was Abu Talib. Both of them were Hashemites. So Imam Ali السلام, if you look at his ancestry, both, both of his parents were relatives of the Prophet and they came from the descendants of Hashim. She was a woman of nobility, a woman of purity. So how did this miraculous pregnancy happen? One hadith tells us that Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, even before his birth, he would show his mother some amazing divine signs. How? One hadith tells us one day Abu Talib, he saw Imam Ali when he was a boy breaking some idols secretly. So Abu Talib tells his wife, he tells her Fatima, I saw Ali breaking the idols. She tells him, I don't find that strange. He's like, why? She's like, when he was in my womb, whenever I would pass by an idol, he would kick me away from the idol. That's Ali ibn Abi Talib. That's how sensitive he was to the idols. Whenever I would get close to the idols, 
he would start kicking inside my womb to push me away from the idol. I knew that Ali was special and he's very anti-idols. And I never worshipped any idols. I worshipped Allah and I felt as if the fetus was telling me, worship only Allah, don't even get near the idols. So this is Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. So how did that happen? Fatima bint Asad, she was pregnant. She was in Masjid al-Haram doing the tawaf, circulating around the Kaaba. When suddenly she starts going through labor. She experiences the pain of labor. She's in tawaf, she doesn't know where to go. You know, in that moment when suddenly you go through labor, you just want a refuge, a place to hide from the men, from the people. But she did not know where to go. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired her to go towards the Kaaba. She was in Masjid al-Haram, she goes towards the Kaaba, not knowing what's going to happen. When she reaches one of the corners of the Kaaba, one of the sides of the Kaaba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala splits the wall open, she enters the Kaaba. She takes that as a sign from God that you should come here. Because a woman when she's going through labor and she's going to bleed, she would naturally leave the mosque, right? Not to contaminate the mosque. But Allah upon splitting the Kaaba, she took that as a sign that God, the owner of this house does not want me out. He actually wants me to go inside the Kaaba. So she goes inside the Kaaba and Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam is born. Yes, brother. I said, didn't she recite a dua before uh, that happened? Yes, she did recite a dua. There's discussion as to exactly what she said, but we maybe we can discuss that in the group inshallah. She does recite a dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala splits the wall open. She goes inside the Kaaba. Now some hadiths tell us that who is the one who received her inside the Kaaba? Because you know, when you, as a woman, when you go through labor, you need a midwife, right? Someone to assist you with your labor. Who assisted Fatima bint Asad? Does anyone know? Four women assisted her. Maryam alayhi salam. Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh. The mother of Musa. And Hajar, yes. These four, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them to help and assist in the birth of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Now in what position was Imam Ali alayhi salam born? He was born, the first thing that happened after his birth, he went into sujood. He went into sujood. What did he say? Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. This is according to a hadith. I bear witness there is no God but Allah. Wa anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. So he was speaking as a child. He was speaking as a newborn infant just like Jesus spoke. Mm -hmm. So he said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of God. Then he said, and I bear witness that I am the successor of Muhammad. That's the third phrase that he said. Then he said, Wa bi Muhammadin khatam Allahu al nubuwa and I bear witness that Muhammad is the last messenger of God. And I am Amir al Mu'mineen, the last of the successors. So Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said those words as soon as he was born. Now the Imam did sujood. Some ignorance have tried to raise an objection here. They said, okay, Imam Ali, when he did sujood in the Kaaba, or he was born in the Kaaba, that's not a virtue for him. That's actually a vice. Why? Because if Imam Ali did sujood in the Kaaba, he did sujood to the idols. Because the Kaaba was filled with idols, you had idols on top of the Kaaba. So Imam Ali alayhi salam, he did sujood to those idols and that's not really a virtue. What do you make of this? Seriously. It's amazing how some people sink so low with their intellect to raise such ridiculous objections. First of all, who was the one who opened the Kaaba for the Imam to be born? Allah, okay? You think Allah who opened the Kaaba for Imam Ali, he's gonna let Imam Ali prostrate to the idols and glorify the idols? If you said Imam Ali prostrated to the idols, that means you're insulting God because who allowed Imam Ali to go in the Kaaba in the first place? It was God.
Allah allowed him to go there. So is Allah going to allow him to worship the idols? No. The Kaaba is the house of God. Who cares if there are idols? He was worshiping Allah. Number two, the Prophet would come to Masjid al-Haram. He would go around the Kaaba when there were idols. Does that mean that the Prophet would worship the idols too? In fact, the Muslims when they did the Hajj that year, when they made the treaty with the pagans, the idols were still in Mecca. And the Muslims would pray towards the Kaaba and the idols were there. What does that mean? Did the Prophet and all those Muslims worship the idols? Because when the Prophet conquered Mecca, then they demolished the idols. That was when, two years before the Prophet passed away, two years. All that time the idols were there. The Muslims would do their Hajj, they go to the Kaaba, they pray to the Kaaba, and the idols were there. Does that mean that the Prophet, God forbid, and Muslims, they all did shirk and they worshiped the idols? Preposterous. You see, they try to find anything to lower the status of the Imam and to negate his virtues. And this was one crazy attempt to say Imam Ali worshiped the idols. So now, how long did Fatima bint Asad stay in the Kaaba? She stayed in the Kaaba for three days. Three days, she's gone, she's not visible to the public, she's hiding inside the Kaaba. At that time, when she gives birth, Allah sends the news to who? To the Prophet God reveals to the Messenger of God that Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, was born. In one hadith the Prophet says, Allah revealed to me that Ali has been born. And Allah sent the Prophet this message through one of his angels. Ya Habib Allah, O oh the beloved of God, al Ali al-A'la yuqru'uka salam The Most High Allah sends his salam to you. Wa yuhanni'uka bi wuladati akhika Ali and he gives you the good news that your brother Ali is born. And he is telling you that your prophethood is now close. Because now I have created the supporter for you. Your supporter Ali has been born. So get ready, soon I will send you as a messenger. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives the prophet this good news. As soon as Imam Ali was born, the Messenger of God, he asked Fatima bint Asad, he told her, look, I have a special status with this boy, I want to raise him, I want to feed him, I want to sleep by his side, I want to take care of him. And we have many, many narrations here, how every night Imam Ali would sleep by the Prophet's bed, the Prophet would put him to sleep, he would push his cradle, until Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib would sleep. He would carry the Imam on his chest. Sometimes when the Imam would cry, the Prophet, he would chew the food and then he would take the food once it's soft and he would put it in the mouth of Imam Ali To that extent, yes, the Messenger of God would do that. Sometimes even hadiths tell us the Prophet would stick his tongue into the mouth of Imam Ali and Imam Ali would suck on the Prophet's tongue. Yes, they had a special relationship. Now I know in our culture this is weird, right? But back then in that society, the Prophet was sending a powerful message that this boy is from my own self. This boy is from my own self. So we see that the Prophet had a very special relationship with Imam Ali alayhi salam. Yes, brother. I heard that when uh, Muhammad first told Imam Ali, uh, Imam Ali told him, Yes. Yes, we do have a hadith that says when the Prophet first embraced Imam Ali, he read verses from Surah Al Mu'minun, Qad Aflah Al Mu'minun. The Mu'minun, the believers, have achieved victory. So the Prophet said, they will achieve victory through you because you are the leader of the Mu'mineen. Now some have objected, wait a minute, this was before the revelation of the Qur'an. How could Imam Ali say that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that to Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. So there is no issue with that, yes. No, go on. I did 
really need to know if you get through that because I believe that she's that annoyed that people were questioning because they didn't notice that she did go and go where is that going to see? So why didn't anybody attempt to open the door? There is a door for the Kaaba. There is a door for the Kaaba, yes. However, you know, you had guardians of the Kaaba, they had a lock. But number two, when they realized that the uh, wall of the Kaaba split open and then it closed miraculously, they took that as a sign not to go inside the Kaaba. That was a clear sign for them. It did. Yes, absolutely it did. But, but it was clear it was a miracle. So once they realized this was a miracle, they knew not to intervene and let it just naturally, you know, take its course. Yes. So they could have opened the door of the Kaaba. However, because they recognized it was a miracle, they just left it, you know, to see when she would come out from the Kaaba. So the Prophet had a very special relationship with the Imam alayhi salam. You know, in many of his khutbas, Imam Ali al-Nahj al-Balagha, he says, when I was young, the Prophet would carry me, he would put me to sleep, he would chew the food for me, and he would say, I would follow the Prophet just like a baby calf follows its mother. Wherever he would go, I would go with him. Every day he would teach me new akhlaq, he would teach me new knowledge, and really Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, was raised by the Prophet. For all those years, the one who took care of him was the Messenger of God. The one who educated him, disciplined him, taught him, raised him was the Prophet. And the biggest insult, brothers and sisters, to the Prophet is that when he's raised a boy like that, at the hands of the Prophet, you delay him and you make him number four. That's an insult to the Messenger of God. When those three were worshipping the idols, the Prophet himself was raising Imam Ali. The first student of the Prophet was Imam Ali. The first baby boy who the Prophet raised was Imam Ali. Yet, you make him number four. That's not an insult to Imam Ali really. That's an insult to the Prophet. That, yeah, and to God. That means, Ya Rasulullah, you know what? We have no respect for all your efforts in raising this boy. Because you didn't really do a good job. In the end, there were three who came before Imam Ali. Pagan mothers raised those three and they turned out to be better than the baby that you yourself raised. That's an insult to the Prophet Yes, brother. Wait, so why is there so much hate directed like specifically towards him and his father and his like specifically like his family? Why is it only them? Are Briefly because of jealousy, because he had all the virtues mm -hmm. and they just could not take that. Imam Ali having virtue after virtue after virtue, they did not take that. That was one reason why you see uh, so much hatred. Yes. Okay, so the name of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Fatima bint Asad, she does not name Imam Ali. Abu Talib does not name Imam Ali yet. So one hadith tells us Imam Ali when he was born, he did not open his eyes, he kept it close. All that time they were closed until Fatima left the Kaaba, she came when the Prophet saw him, then he opened his eyes. He wanted to see the first thing in his life, the face of the Prophet So after the Prophet meets him and sees him, then the Prophet says, I have given the name of Ali to this baby boy. So the name of Ali came from the Prophet and he received that as revelation from God. So Imam Ali was not named by his parents, he was named by who? By the Prophet And that just shows how close they were. Yes brother. Don't they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the one that named Imam Ali? Yes, Allah is the one who named him. He revealed it to the Prophet, then the Prophet officially gave him that name. Yes. Was that name given to anybody before him? Yes, that name was given to others before him. Um, because remember, Ali was still an Arabic name. It comes from the meaning that means high. So yes, some others did have that name, but it was still a unique name. It was not like a very common name that was given to boys. Yes. 